Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, Minglawa. We are very happy this afternoon that uh, we can come back and continue with our welcome to the family seminar. This is a map. This seminar is very important because um, we have a lot of baptized church members, newly baptized church members, and they need to be welcomed to the church. The seminar has a matama, yiji, but a papal lesson to not ten or ma, young chi to a tidy, nitching kind of a wallare, no, through good juice of wood, that the hankana, matama, yiji, a hankana pibare. And there are many topics uh, in this seminar that this will help church members um, that will help church members uh, be able to nurture our newly baptized members. So this afternoon we are going to study all about conflict resolution. So dinani ma thuta pian chan ro ti eng thong mi ta so ma yan sa ya de khe khe pya dana ri belu phi shim le so de ha o ati ka tha pi ro li la twa ma phi pa de. How many of you have experienced conflict in your life? Atta ta ma khe khe pya dana be na yaw mi yan sa khe bu le. Conflict with your parents, conflict with your spouse, conflict with your friends. Have you experienced conflict? 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 Are you happy when there is conflict? Yeah, of course we are not happy when there is conflict. So we will talk about conflict this afternoon. And hopefully we will be able to suggest important uh, principles on how we deal with our conflict. So conflict is when two ideas, personalities, or actions collide, we call it conflict. In other words, when our ideas, when our personalities um, doesn't or don't match with uh, the ideas and personalities of others, then we experience conflict. So conflict is not Okay, I will share to you the statistics of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Conflict is one of the highest triggering causes for backsliding. So the Piatana Chao Teno Tema backsliding one now Pian Soda. Ya chin a chow ya the mitasu the kick hair piatana junk pide so to ya that I mean song pide. So we do not want that to happen to our newly baptized members that they would backslide because of conflict. That's something a kick hair piatana chow to know a tid do yung chitu attend that they have pian now so bu to know ma a loom shibu. So when we talk about conflict, it may be conflict with church members, conflict with church leaders or conflict so, in the family. So here is uh, the statistics. It says that 24% of the church's congregation experience a serious conflict enough to call a special meeting. So the so, 
Now, I eat it, the better than I did, no consigned yard, so I do yard. Attend, attend that the yama, Nasilia, or no, a la la, yes, I are so to yard, eh? So you experience that in the church. Sometimes when there is a conflict, immediately the church elder will call for a meeting. And then 26% of the churches experience conflict at the average of two years causing members to leave the church. So long care, the near tied up in Chirikama. Attend or Nasacha Kainula was in the Kaka Piatana Jan. Attend or Sunkwa Jarisura, not attend Tari, Tayaman, a Sacha Kainula Shiras or Tuyare. So just imagine twenty six per cent leave the church because of conflict. Since I loyare, General, the Kaka Mita Supiatana Jan, attend or Tayaman, a Sacha Yoka, attend or Sunto Tuyaris or Tuyar. And then nine percent experience a conflict that lead leaders to leave the congregation. So, the Kuya Hainan no Lauga, the Atui Jung Jungwa, no, attend or go Sunkware, Gansong, Gansong, the Alebe, attend or Sunkware, Kuya Hainula. So, when we talk about conflict, it affects people, not only church members, not only church leaders, but even pastors. So, the conflicts already take care of General Sunir Kama. So it's very important that we have to study about conflict and learn how to handle our conflict. Because conflict. Most people perceive conflict as negative. conflict some people consider conflict as a disruption of the uh, peace in the in the church or in the family or in the community. So that's how we perceive, that's how we see conflict. It's something negative, it's something that uh, uh, destroy the relationship in the church, destroy relationship in the home. The general conflict option generally says, I'm going to go to the house, 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 I'm going to go to the house. So I will go now into the levels of conflict. So the Piatana, the Bodhachin Kwelemu, the conflict has to end. There are three levels of conflict. Not to a level of Yasuin, a tongue level law, a sentence in Lashide. The first level is we call it interpersonal conflict. But Hama level, but Hama Senkaro, they are not there, Jama Shide, a dream, Paisaya, Piatana. It is a conflict between two or more. Uh, people. Okay, some people may have debate, may have arguments, and so on and so forth. So that is considered as conflict, so interpersonal. There is another kind of conflict which we call intrapersonal conflict. So now the hookah or intrapersonal conflict. So by that. This is a conflict within you. This is a conflict with? In you, inside. So now, at a jar or, they only tell me, go on a go, go a tema, better than a shinida. Do the panemo, go a good tema, better than a shinida. For example, you believe that the Sabbath is holy day. So now, over my, you have to be a swing. But somehow you do not, what's this? You do not worship God on the Sabbath. Or you go somewhere or during Saturday, you don't go to church, but you believe that Sabbath is a, a day of rest 
But you go somewhere. You, you, you did not worship God during the Sabbath. So as you think about it, then there is conflict inside. So, a lot of us have that interpersonal conflict. It is something that we value, that we don't do it, then that becomes interpersonal conflict. There is also what we call intra-group conflict. So not to in the group conflicts with Roshi, okay. maybe in the church there is one group, another group, another group, and they are fighting each other. And sometimes this is happening in the church. And when this is happening in the church, of course, our newly baptized members will what? They will say, oh, why Adventists are like this? So there are many, many kinds of conflict. Interpersonal conflict, intra-group conflict, and then uh, what's this? Uh, intrapersonal conflict, and intra-group con conflict and also intra-group conflict. Okay, how conflict begins interpersonally? So, you know, it starts with small beginning. And sometimes this is what we call blips or irritation. There are things that irritates us uh, in the family because of some uh, behavior activities of a certain individual. So, I don't know. And as we associate together, it cannot be avoided that there are uh, irritations that would happen. So, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even in the house, sometimes we experience uh, blips or irritation like, for example, your spouse occasionally leaves dirty dishes on the table. And sometimes or, or children don't come on time. You know, this cause uh, a sort of uh, a belief or what we call irritation in the relationship. So, conflict begins with that little things. And then when these irritations, you know, irritants so would continue, the, the next thing that will happen, there is what we call clashes. There will be clashes. Oh, there will be arguments already. And this time there will be confrontative uh, arguments. And now 
relationship becomes complex this time. So what will happen? There is repeated arguments. And then most, most of the, shall we say, uh, people are angry already. And then one will be less cooperative. Uh, one will no longer cooperate or one will no longer talk or he will no longer trust the individual. So just, just think of how it uh, goes into classes. It starts with little things, irritants. And then if you do not take care of these irritants, what will happen, it becomes classes because one will be angry already, one will no longer talk, and that is what we call classes already. So, as I said, I think that you can say 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 that you can Now, if that classes will not be remedied, if you will not take care of that immediately, then it will go deeper. The conflict will go deeper and it becomes what? A crisis. So, and this is now a difficult uh, situation when it comes to conflict. So, any crisis because your, your purpose here is already to hurt someone. And it's possible to get rid of, of the person. So this is a, a more complicated uh, situation already. I'm And sometimes uh, problem solving uh, strategies sometimes are no longer helpful in this particular situation. Okay, so in the house, maybe the wife will say, okay, let us separate. Uh, this, this is now the time that somebody will say, oh, I will kill you. You want to destroy the person. So, crisis. So, as much as possible, we do not want conflict to reach at this level. So, the earlier, the earlier, the better. So, so, if it is still in the blips or irritation, we have to do something with it. You have to settle that, uh, that uh, irritation uh, thing that uh, happens. So, so if it cannot really be avoided that it will go into classes, I think during this uh, situation here where there are cl uh, classes, then we should do something that the conflict can be remedied. So, we do not want to go into crisis. Because um, when you reach crisis, it's really difficult to settle the conflict. Uh, we have an example here. Your child or spouse does not want to come home anymore. You know? So, and sometimes children won't talk 
would not talk anymore to their parents. Why? Because the relationship is already broken. So the principle is the earlier and the this uh, was this the the earlier you deal with conflict the better. And up here go so long so. If it is still in irritation or clashes, if as much as possible, you have to settle it. So, you know, when I was in, 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 I was in. So, how are we going to deal with conflict? I don't know the heck, 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 I don't know the heck. Well, of course, conflict is not the problem. The real problem is the way we handle conflict. Sometimes we do not know how to handle conflict. So we are going to study on how we are going to handle conflict. There are four responses to conflict. Okay, one response is, okay, I win, you lose. You like this one, you win. I win, you lose. So there, so, there, so there is a loser. So there is a loser. Another one is you win, I lose. So there is a loser. You know when there is win, lose, Situation, it's not really a good way of dealing with conflict. So the conflict of Hishin in Yama, a show, a night, at the Sanika, Longwa. And there is another response, another response to conflict by saying, Oh, both of us. Not who needs any car or Nahusalong car, no one wins. Not Nahusalong Pipit, Napoisalong, Nyosalong car, and I you may win, win, one, to lay and I you there, cool and I all are losers. And of course, the best perception is when everyone wins. You are all winners in dealing with conflict. This is the best. When no one loses, but everybody wins. So when we have conflict resolution, our goal, brethren, is always everyone should win in the process of resolving conflict. Conflict so that's our goal in conflict resolution. So our goal is everyone should win, no one should lose. So here are some steps for resolving conflict. Resolving conflict Step. The first one is you have to plan your fight. You have to plan your fight. How do you plan your fight? Are you going to talk to your wife? Okay, let's plan for a fight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. When you have conflict, 
it's really important that you have to plan how you are going to deal with it. So, Another one is you have to define the problem. It should not be vague. Because sometimes uh, the reason why we cannot solve our conflict is because we cannot really uh, define what is the problem. So it's very important that these uh, things are clear. Of course, another one is You're both guilty. Not to quarrel, Neo Salon, no, the Kunadunga conflict with Neo Salonka, Aru Mavare Sure, the Tabotha Shibu. You know, when you deal with con conflict, Tropiatana go be sent in Yama. You have to also consider that it's not only on the others, on the other person, but both of you are involved in conflict. Why sometimes conflict cannot be solved is because we are thinking that the person is the only one uh, was this guilty. So, but people, but people, my patient, I so the hard to know what go pick go a man, see where ten people, the pet that guy where two young where two two a man where two malu where hello, me to know you say the kind of you know it takes. Takes two to fight. So in a conflict, it cannot be that the only the, the other side is the problem. So every issue has sides. So and even when someone is right, they may not express their point in the right way. So it's really very important that uh, you consider the other side. And also you have to consider yourself. That both of you are really involved in the conflict. Okay, another one is historical analysis. Probably in the past you have tried to was this to uh, attempt in solving the conflict. Uh, so you have to analyze what happened uh, before, what happened before this uh, situation. What happened, what happened when uh, there was that uh, conflict? What were the solutions that were, uh, that were applied? So you know, historical analysis will help you see uh, what other options that you are going to consider. And another one is brainstorm. Now brainstorm Oh no, brainstorm now. So what you are going to do is you are going to discuss together. Discussing in a very positive way. Where there is openness to both of you. And you are willing to, what's this, to come up with a solution. 
And then once you have brainstormed all the possible solutions, then you have to evaluate the solutions that you have. So look at each situation and weigh the pros and cons. And then as, as, uh, as soon as you have weighed or yeah, uh, consider the, the solutions, the best solution which you think really is the appropriate uh, one, then you have to agree on that and then try to apply that as a solution to the problem. The and you pick up that solution. So, and then agree on your parts. Discuss how you will each approach the solution. And then step nine, after the solution, there should be what? Post-fight follow-up. So it means that you need to have another schedule. And the purpose of this is to find out how how was how successful you were before? So, to know about to try the listening car, below the omen toilet, so that people don't have to be And this is also to find out whether you need another solution. So, to know so long as the people don't have to give a little jar, so that people shall be able to don't have to be there. So, evaluation is very important. That just below people stand still, I am easy. Because it helps you see the progress of the solution that you adopted. So to know which I like that, this and 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 this. Step 10, of course, is reward yourselves. So if the solution was workable, then it's good that you have a sort of a party or you go out together or there is a celebration because of the success of your resolution. So these are uh, considered as the steps for resolving conflict. So the And and here is a very important point when you do the conflict resolution. When you talk together, there should be what we call active listening. It, it means that it means that you listen carefully to the to the discussion and also the informations that you are sharing to each other. And then so the the most important here is first you have to focus on the other person without determining what you will say in response. So why sometimes uh, in conversation, why sometimes we cannot come up with quality uh, solution is because we do not focus ourselves during the conversation. We hear but we do not listen. We are only hearing, but we are not listening. 
So it's very important that we have to listen, not only hear, but also listen. And it can be done if we are focused in our uh, listening. So do not uh, be anxious first of things that you are going to say. What is important is first focus your attention to the one uh, speaking. So, the next is, of course, when they are done sharing, then what you are going to do is uh, repeat back the statement of the other person. Why you are going to repeat back? Because you want to make sure that what the other person was saying is actually the, the right one. And then you will be able to summarize and paraphrase. And through this, you, you will know the perspective and understanding of the other person. So the other and then after that active listening that uh, was this uh, uh, talking to the uh, focus and then paraphrasing what you're going to do is you may, be, you, may, you may ask by saying is there more or anything else so this is what we call active listening. Again, we should be focused when there is conversation. And then we should repeat what the person is saying. And then at the, at the end, you may ask, what more or what else do you want to say? And then, of course, finally ask them uh, if you can respond. Now, so uh, from the social science uh, side, I would go back, I would go to the Bible now. Okay. Here are seven biblical principles in resolving conflict. According to the Bible. First, first is take the humble initiative. So it must be you who should take the initiative of resolving the conflict. Do not wait the conflict to come to you. Do not ignore the conflict. Do not hide from conflict. Do not deny the conflict. That is how to take initiative. You know there are some people who are saying, well, we should not... Uh, Go into this conflict. Time is a great healer. So, is that right? Does time heal conflict? So, do not say time will heal it. Time does nothing to conflict. If time heals the doctor, 
Can you say wait time heals for you? You know, if we keep on waiting, waiting and waiting time, it makes conflict even worse. So immediately when there is conflict, face it. Face the conflict. The only way to resolve conflict is to face it. And there are three challenges in facing conflict. One is fear of conflict. Another one is fear of sitting up the conflict or meeting. And then fear on what to do in conflict situation. So let us deal our fear of conflict. Especially our feeling of fear. Here is uh, a story in the Bible, Genesis 13, 10. You know Adam and Eve, after the sin, after the, the sin against God, it says, He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. So, Adam and Eve had conflict with God. They had conflict with God, Adam and Eve. And because of this conflict, they are afraid to face the conflict. So here you can see a lot of fear. Fear of being exposed, fear of being vulnerable, fear of the demanding and controlling situation. So fear of conflict will bring us to a situation and sometimes we say, I will hide, I will withdraw, I would isolate, I would fall back, I will start attacking you. So fear of conflict will bring us a situation where it makes us distant to one another, makes us demanding, makes us controlling others, and of course fear can keep us from deeper intimacy with people. So what we really fear is the emotion of the conflict. We do not, we do not want to be rejected. We do not want to be misunderstood. We do not want that others will not accept us. So because of this, uh, we do not want to face conflict. But it's not actually conflict that we fear. It is this, uh, the feelings. So the feelings so we need to be courageous in dealing with conflict so where to find courage to face conflict let us remember brethren that only courageous people can resolve conflict so, where can we find it? It says here, For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but a power and love and discipline. So, 
Apostle Paul says, Remember, God is not giving you fear. But He has the power and the love and the discipline in such a way that we can go on with the uh, challenging situations that we are facing. So our love to God overcomes our fear. Our love to God will draw us to possess courage to settle conflict with our fellow men. And brethren, when our love to God is deeper than our fear, our desire to resolve conflict is higher. When our love to God is heavier than fear of man, we will be able to love man more deeply and profoundly. So pray to God that He will give you the courage to face conflict. Do not be controlled of your feelings. Do not be controlled of your fear. And the Holy Spirit will give you the power and the courage we to face the conflict. Another important thing here is we should deal the conflict with the right timing. Let us remember that timing is everything. There are people are saying, okay, when they are ready, they can come to me to settle their conflict. But friends, the admonition, the advice is, let us not delay. We have to deal the conflict timely. That's why in Matthew 5, 23, 24, there is the biblical solution when it comes to conflict. Because what does the text say? First, reconciliation takes priority over worship. What is the use of worship if we are not right with God and also right with our fellow men? That's why it says here, therefore if you are presenting your offering at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, Leave your offering there before the altar and go first. Be reconciled to your brother and then come and present your offering. So it appears that when we have problem in our relationship, with our uh, brethren or with our fellow believers, we should first settle it. It means that, yes, you want to sing, you want to hear God's word, you want to fellowship, good. But according to Jesus, be reconciled first. Because what is worship if we do not have good relationship with our fellow men? Okay, now we will go into the sitting of a meeting. And there are suggestions to sit up meeting. Choose the right time. 
the right time is when the time is best for, for both of you. So you have to agree the best time. And then, and then you have to choose the right place. Now the Kukaro Mankan and Nisanit Juyame. A place that is neutral, a place that you can be relaxed, a place a place that you cannot be disturbed or you cannot be bothered. So Tayana to the bar to Myama Nainia Nas Lung Chung Nia at Nia Juba. And then always pray before the meeting. That's very important. Do so mum of chicken lima. And then in going to the meeting. Always come with a positive attitude. Attitude to solve the problem. You are not going there to attack. You are not going there to belittle or demand. In other words, when you go there, you pray that the Lord will guide you and that when you go there, your purpose is actually to solve the problem. So now what to do when there is conflict biblically? First, we have to confess our part of the conflict. Let us remember that we always have blind spot in our, ourselves. The other person may be 99.9 .9 wrong and you are only 0.001% wrong. You have to confess that 001%. So confession, confession is very important. First confess. And then start the process of conflict resolution. Do not start with condemning, accusing. Start with us. In other words, not pointing to someone or somebody, but start with us. And then start the humble analysis of ourselves. What is happening? What is the situation between us? Of course, you have to start with honest personal evaluation. In an humble way, let us evaluate ourselves before starting the conflict resolution. Let us begin by asking questions to ourselves. Maybe I am unrealistic. Maybe I am too demanding. Maybe I am too insensitive. Maybe I am ungrateful. Maybe I am untactful. Maybe I am oversensitive. So analyze yourselves. <laughs> And then never use the following excuses. Sometimes in a conflict resolution, uh, these things happen. Sometimes we hear people saying, we are just incompatible. We cannot really solve this problem. We, we do not match with, it other, with, with, with each other. So remove that in our mind. 
Ari Pissi Nide, Piatanaku, Chonging Mesa, Alu Pissi Nide Yarigo, Setekani, Tolaiba. Because it's not incompatibility, but I think the problem is immaturity. The Gero Araga, General Setham of Piwal of Chile, Setha Piwad at the Botashiam, the Botashiam. When we refuse to grow into mature person, that makes the problem. A great Setha the Botha Piwad is in. By nature, we are self-centered and we do not make change to grow in harmony with one another. So, and sometimes our problem in conflict resolution is we are too self-centered. And, and sometimes why we cannot solve the problem is because we are only think, thinking of ourselves. Sometimes we keep, we keep on asking, what is for us or for me? You know, relationship dies if we are willing to move and willing to show a little humility and a little understanding. So it's very easy. Uh, it's, it's, very, it's important that we have to uh, have that relational uh, situation with our people. Another principle in solving conflict is we have to listen for the hurting. You know, when there is a conflict, people are, have, are experiencing uh, pains. So we have to listen to them. James 1.19 This you know, my beloved brethren, but everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. So we should listen. Active listening is very, very important. Listening is the key to understanding. Listening is understanding their background. And in listening, there are two things that should come into our mind, according to Paul. And this is the advice of Paul. Paul said, each of us is to please his neighbor for his good, for his edification, to his edification. So when we listen, our purpose is to please our neighbor and also for his growth. So And then another biblical principle, it says, Paul said, we must bear the burden of being considerate of the doubts and fears of others, of those who feel these things are wrong. Let's please the other fellow, not ourselves, and do what is for his good, and thus build him up in the Lord. Another important principle in resolving conflict is we always considered the perspective of others. So from your need, you move to the other's party need. 
you move to other perspective. And then we consider their viewpoints. So it means that yes, uh, you may be somebody, but during that uh, conflict resolution, you are willing to go down and be willing to really understand the other person. This is, this is the advice of Paul. Do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. Why sometimes we cannot solve the conflict is because we are only looking at our interest, not the interest of others. So we have to consider the needs of others. Focus on their perspective and understanding. Another important principle is tell the truth tactfully. Paul said, speak the truth in love. So you use truth to Establish good relationship with one another. You do not use truth to pound somebody. Sometimes we are, sometimes we are using the truth to hammer someone. But we should, we should use truth in love, speak the truth in love in such a way that the conflict can be solved. This is Ephesians 4.15. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ. It's very important that we need to use loving words when we have conflict resolution. Here is a statement from Apostle Paul said, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment, so that it will give grace to those who hear. So words is very important because foolish words hurts. Wise words heals. So it's very important that in the conflict resolution process, the words should be coated with love, with truth, so that uh, we will be able to resolve the conflict. Another principle in biblical principle in uh, solving conflict is you fix the problem, not the blame. So sometimes, sometimes what is happening in the conflict resolution is we keep on blaming. Ah, this could not have happened if you did not do this. So we keep on blaming. Blame makes you lame. 
So you need to establish a ground rules in what you say. Don't use threatening words. Do not walk out if there is a sort of disagreement, heated, uh, was this uh, conversation. Don't walk out. And do not even attempt to bring someone to help you there. So or right, your parents. So fix the problem, not the blame. Another principle is focus on reconciliation, not resolution. Reconciliation is reestablishing relationship. Whereas resolution is agreeing on every issue. And in dealing with conflict, it's really impossible that both of you can really 100% agree. Nobody in this planet can agree and resolve with you. We are all different. That's why we cannot really agree to each other. But you can have relationship without agreeing with one another. Learn to agree without disagreeable, and that is wisdom. So focusing on relationship makes issue very, very important. So in conclusion, now so Take the humble initiative. Summary. Take the initiative. When there is conflict, take the initiative. A humble initiative. And then confess your part of the conflict. Very important. And then listen to the other party, especially the hearting. And then consider the other's party perspective or understanding. And then tell the truth tactfully. Fix the problem, not the blame. And then focus on conflict resolution, not on reconciliation, not in resolution. So, when we do conflict reconciliation, there are attitude of the heart in conflict resolution. I would like to tell you that when the motive when we do conflict resolution is always to redeem somebody. So to know the better now go fish and a hammer, a dig at a pimaka to the power go case. So the motive of conflict reconciliation is for the redemption of everyone. That's how the better now go fish and a hammer to know at the bottom motive car, Bapiam Lesuro to the power. And the temperament, when we do conflict resolution, the temperament is always love. So take note of this. The motive of reconciliation is always to redeem. The temperament is love. So here are the B attitude. First, 
Be a confessor. In other words, always confess or confess your part of the conflict. Another one is be an edifier. In other words, your purpose there is actually to help somebody, to help him grow in his uh, relationship. That's why Paul said, no rotten talk should come from your mouth, but only what is good for the building up of someone in need in order to give grace to those who hear. So, be an edifier. Another one, counsel, so that we will be able, our personality will be able really to uh, help uh, the relationship. There are conflict in the church. Be a restorer. So, to Naroga, attend on my pillar, the Pietana, go, Piala, Piroma, Naku, Yaon. Here is a text. Brothers, if someone is caught in any wrongdoing, you are spiritual. You who are spiritual should restore such a person with a gentle spirit, watching out for yourselves so you won't be tempted also. Good advice from the Bible. Gentle spirit. Another, be a forgiver. Here is a text from the Bible. And be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just God also forgive you in Christ. Another attitude is be a unifier. Here is a text from Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 1.10. Now I urge you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all say the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, and that you be united with the same understanding and the same conviction. Another attitude, be an example. Here is, here is uh, an advice from Peter. It says, Shepherd God's flock among you, not overseeing out of compulsion, but freely according to God's will, not for the money, but eagerly, not lording it over those who entrusted to you, being examples to the flock. ရှင်ပေါ်ပြီးသားပါပြောလဲဆိုတော့ပေတ်ရို့ဘရမဆာဆောင်အန်ချင်ငါးအငယ်နိကနေတုံးမှာတူထိန်းတို့တဲ့เ
সেই তবে থাকে তোমার চেনসা আচেন পি সেটি কু লু খানু পে আতঙ্কুমে সুইন তিনে নথে মা So it is my prayer that this year 2019 as we help our newly baptized members we will be able to relate to them and then if there are some problems there are conflicts then we can easily uh, help them and then they will stay in the church longer and we will have good experience being christians amen sa jane belu ni gong chot le so ro din na thaung sikku atwat jano su taung pi ba de de jano yung chi tu atit de ko jano chikhen yin ni swa ne sit san pyu mu ba pya ta na phit la de kha ma tyao ne tyao ko na ro principle de atai chit chit khin khin yin ni swa lo me so jano ro tyao de de ti sok sa phit me atin no the ma amu ro ma phya ai mit ta ma a lo atu tu ko Thank you very much.